Well, I was born and raised in Bakersfield, California in the San Joaquin Valley. And I was the oldest of three daughters, and I'm the oldest of 23 grandchildren on my mother's side. So when people ask me what was your childhood like, I tell them the truth, it was noisy. And I have a lot of fond memories of, of big family gatherings at my Mexican grandmother's house. My other grandmother also lived nearby, and she lived out in Arvin, California, and she was from Oklahoma. So uh, one Saturday, I would go to one grandmother's house, and I would eat fried chicken, black-eyed peas, smothered greens, and peach cobbler with big fat dumplings that would stay in your stomach for about a week. And the next weekend, I'd go to my other grandmother's house and eat red mole and enchiladas, rice and beans, and lamb stuffed with garlic. So, um, you know, I, I, I had a really interesting, fun, childhood. Uh, one of the things that I think prepared me the most for being a writer was that I was blessed with a lot of big blocks of unchoreographed time and a lot of benevolent neglect um, that gave me the opportunity to spend a lot of time playing and, and developing my imagination and I'm really thankful for that. When I was in fifth grade we moved across town and I was the new kid at school. I didn't really fit in. I was too tall, my feet were too big, my clothes weren't right, and um, I started going to the library every Tuesday after school with a friend of mine. My mother worked so she couldn't take me to the library on a regular basis, and her mother stayed home and took her every Tuesday, and I started going with them. And I, I have, I'm not sure why I fell into books, but I suspect it was because I was coping through them, that I was, um, you know, they, they were, um, they became redeeming to me because I could escape into them. And so that's really when I got sort of obsessed with them and then spent most of my, my time riding my bike to the library, a little branch library in, in East Bakersfield, and loading up my bike basket with books and coming home and spending um, an awful lot of time reading. But it was how I adapted to my new environment, so to speak. When I was growing up, she would frequently mention her life in the farm labor camps. Um, and so I always knew about that part of her life. But it wasn't until I was a grown up and had my own children and she would come to my house and spend say two weeks at a time with me on various occasions that she would sit around and um, reminisce about Mexico. And I was an adult before I knew anything about her Mexican life and living in Aguascalientes and what it was like for her to grow up there. And it was sort of a revelation to discover that she was actually wealthy and that she had servants. Because I always thought that, you know, as a child, I, her, her beginnings sort of began in the farm labor camp. It, you know, in my mind, there wasn't anything before that. And so it was, it was very much an epiphany to discover that she had this whole other sort of princess life in Mexico. I became a bilingual Head Start teacher in Escondido, and after that I got married and stayed home with my children for a number of years, and I went back to school to get my master's in education. And after I had turned in some work, a professor um, came up to me one day after class and asked me to stay after, and she asked me if I'd ever considered doing any professional writing. And up to that point, I hadn't. I, um, but you know, once she planted the seed, I really couldn't stop thinking about it. I did, end up, you know, finished my master's and I became an administrator of an early childhood program and I did that for five years, but I was already starting to write. Most people are familiar with the federal camps um, that John Steinbeck made famous in his novel Grapes of Wrath um, when the federal government came in and set up massive tent cities for the immigrants from the Dust Bowl. But before that, in, 19, in the early 30s, uh, most of the immigrants um, stayed in company camps. On my mother's birth certificate on the line that is reserved for the name of the hospital, it says De Giorgio Farms. Um, she was born in the Mexican camp. Esperanza begins as a very sort of pampered and spoiled um, daughter of a landowner in Aguascalientes, Mexico, and she has a very privileged life. She has servants, and um, she goes to private schools, and she really has never known any other way to live. Um, she comes from a very loving family, but a series of circumstances happen, and her father is, is killed, and she must flee to the United States with her mother. And she, you know, sort of accepts that on face value, but she doesn't really realize um, what's going to happen to her, or where she's going, or or the the 
change of station that's going to occur for her in her life. And so um, they make this journey. They end up in De Giorgio Farms in the San Joaquin Valley, living in a farm labor camp and having to share a very tiny cabin with, any, with a number of people. And the, the story shows her evolution and how she grows into being, uh, or actually how she was forced to grow and into an independent um, young woman. I'll give you a little background on Amelia and Eleanor go for a ride. I was reading an, an adult book one day called Hearts of Fire. And in this book was a series of articles about famous American women and myths about them. Um, that The subtitle had the word myth in the subtitle. So I came across this one paragraph about this evening in 1933 when Amelia Earhart spent the night at the White House and took Eleanor Roosevelt for her first night flight over Washington, D.C. Well, because the word myth was in the subtitle of the book, I thought, oh, I wonder if this is true or not, or maybe it's just one of those stories like George Washington cutting down the cherry tree. So I went to the big library in San Diego and went on the microfiche, the, the Associated Press microfiche, because I figured if it was true, it would have made the press. So I had the date and I went on the next morning's AP um, articles and searched, and sure enough, there were the articles. There were the newspaper accounts of the previous evening. And so then I knew it was true. And so then I began the deeper research and um, the details and contacted the White House Curator's Office and was able to read books um, written by the housekeeper who, who uh, was, lived in the Roosevelt White House. And so one thing led to another and we have Amelia and Eleanor go for a ride. I love little known stories about famous people. I love, um, I mean, if you look at Charlotte in Writing Freedom, and Amelia Earhart, and Eleanor Roosevelt, and Marian Anderson, and Esperanza and Esperanza Rising. I mean, there is certainly, they all sort of kindred spirits in that they had, you know, really wonderful stories that deserve to be told. Marian Anderson and um, Eleanor Roosevelt, and obviously Amelia Earhart, they're very strong, determined, courageous women. They um, defied convention, you know, at a time when a lot of things that they wanted to do were not accepted by society.